All bikes have bearings, and if you ruin your bearings, your bike is going to run slower, the bearings might completely seize, and it's going to cost you time and money to get them fixed. Bearings do wear out over time, but there are several things that people do that dramatically shortens their service life. So I'm going to tell you what to do instead so that your bearings last longer, your bike runs more smoothly, and it'll save you money. So first up, for those that are unaware, quick refresher, bearings exist on parts of your bike that rotate and they're designed to reduce friction. They typically look like this. This is a headset bearing. You have a cartridge and then that's filled with small little balls and it can freely rotate. Now this is a headset bearing and this is a bearing inside a jockey wheel that goes on your pulley wheel there. This one has actually had a section cut away so that you can see the balls inside the cartridge. It's actually a special kind of bearing. I'll tell you more about that later. But as for the quickest way to destroy bearings, well, I spoke to some engineers and experts about bearings from Ceramic Speed in Denmark who gave me the following information. The first thing is incorrect preload. Both too much and too little is bad. So too little will cause play or knocking. You'll have poor alignment of the bearings and you'll also get increased wear from impact loading. Too much preload and you will generate more friction, which creates more heat. You'll have excessive bearing wear and your bearings will just feel rougher. So your chain set just won't spin as nicely. So where do you typically see this? Well, on crank sets, it's most common now on Shimano and SRAM dub crank sets that there is a preload cap on the non-drive side crank arm. So I've got a crank set, a Dura Ace crank set actually from Alex's Dura Ace crank set drawer here. And you can see the preload cap. Now people often create too much preload by excessively tightening this. It should only be finger tight. And the solution to all of the preload problems is to look up what is the actual recommended preload for this particular part or whatever part you're tightening and follow the manufacturer's guidelines. Now, you don't typically use a torque wrench on this part, but it is just supposed to be finger tight. These preload bolts are not designed to hold the crank set together. They're there just to remove axial play in the system before you tighten the important pinch bolts. Same principle applies to headsets, and this is a common place where people get this wrong. So. You should always, when you put your handlebars on your bike or you're adjusting your headset, you should always tighten first the headset compression bolt, which is the top one, before you tighten the bolts on the stem, which then hold the stem in place on the steerer tube. Now, again, always use a torque wrench for this. What you typically see is people really clamp down that top headset bolt, which puts more pressure on the bearings, which will cause them to wear out quicker. It also just makes your steering not feel smooth. It just makes it tighter and the bars don't want to turn as easily. Most wheels now have cartridge bearings, like a smaller version of this, uh, but older wheel designs often use something called cup and cone bearings. They're not as common now, but again, the same applies. The general rule you want to do is to just adjust the preload on the bearing, tighten it so that it runs smooth, but you've removed the play. If no matter what you do when you preload a bearing, there is still play and it will rock slightly, then that's usually a sign that the bearing has become worn and needs replacing because it's developed play inside the bearing. The next one is water and dirt ingress into the bearing and just general contamination. Now, when water and dirt and other contaminants get inside the bearing, they get past the bearing seal here, which I'm just going to remove. Now, dirt will cause increased friction within the bearing and it will cause wear as the balls spin within the cartridge, wearing both the balls and also the cartridge itself. Water getting in there can change the chemistry of the grease, which is in there to act as a lubricant. With the seal removed, you can see the balls, the cage, and also all the grease inside this bearing. Now, the number one way in which you will contaminate your bearings is through jet washing. <laughs> Now, I 
used to jet wash my bikes all the time. I've made videos about it and I've seen pro mechanics doing it. So I thought, oh, that must be the best way to clean your bike. Now, there were always people in the comments section who always said you shouldn't jet wash your bike. But to me, they were just people on the internet that I didn't know. And so I didn't pay as much attention to them uh, until I did actually speak to some engineers who told me absolutely do not do this. We've tested it. Here's the evidence. And they showed me. Um, and so now I don't jet wash my bikes and I would advise that you don't too. The reason being is that the water is so high pressure that it easily gets past the seals which are designed to keep dirt and water out. Even if you do adjacent jet washing, the pressure is still high from the little tiny particles of water that are ricocheting off other parts of your bike, they can still get through the seals. The other thing that gets past the seals is when people decide to spray aerosols like WD-40 liberally all over their bike, um, like it's Lynx Africa, so Axe Africa if you're in America, um, especially when they use the little stick of death that sticks onto the end of that aerosol. This is the perfect tool for getting past the seals on your bearings. And it also contains solvent, which will just wash out the grease that's in there doing a good job. Um, it's absolutely terrible. Don't spray it anywhere near your bike and especially don't try and lube your bearings with it, which is what I've seen people try and do. It's absolutely terrible. Don't do it. Don't put the stick of death anywhere near your bike. Ceramic Speed have actually worked to try and reduce the amount of water and dirt that can get into a bearing with their new BB Alpha. This is it here. The seals on it are redesigned and dramatically reduce what can get past them. However, you might ask the question, why not just make a, a bearing that has completely watertight seals? Well, the problem is that in doing that, you would add too much friction to, to the bearing because the seals do create more friction. And so you're re adding friction to a part that is fundamentally designed to reduce friction. The genius of this redesigned seal is that it increases protection without adding friction. The next thing is poor installation and using the wrong tools. Now, people will buy expensive bearings and put them in their bikes, but then proceed to try and fit a press fit bottom bracket bearing like this into the frame using a hammer because that's all they have. And so they just hammer the bearing into position and it destroys it, it damages it. Do not do this because it will damage the bearings in multiple ways. It can deform the cartridge so that the bearing doesn't run smooth. It can damage the balls and the cage inside. It can damage the seals so that water and dirt can get in more easily. Just absolutely don't do it. The other thing that you shouldn't do is use the wrong tools to remove your bearings. Sometimes you might want to remove them to service them, but in doing that, you should always use the right tools as well. Something not to use on press fit bottom brackets for removal is the splayed tool like this, which goes in and then it pushes it from the inside to hammer it out. Now, that's fine if you're taking the bearing out because it's destroyed and you want to put it in the bin, but if you're taking a bearing out because you want to service it, do not use this as it can damage the bearing from the inside. Bottom bracket bearings come in two main flavors. There's either threaded ones which screw into the bottom bracket or there's press fit ones. Now, you're going to want to use the correct tools, which in the case of threaded ones are these cup attachments, which come in different sizes that then can screw and fit over the shell to then screw it into place. Or if it's a press fit bearing, then you're going to want to use a bottom bracket press set that has appropriate drifts that then go on there, depending on the size of your bearing that you're pressing into place. Now, you might not have these tools, but a good local bike shop should. So threaded bottom brackets like this, I actually prefer them because you can just screw them in and out of the frame, but you do want to use the correct head attachment. There are different shapes, but Park makes a tool for every different one out there. So certain ones don't fit, whereas other ones you'll do. So that's the correct head attachment for this bottom bracket. But as ever, you should always use the correct torque. It's usually written on, so it says here, 40 newton meters there. So that would be 40 newton meters in my big boy torque wrench. Number four is excessively tight bearing fit. Now this 
can occur when you have either too much pressure on the inner or outer race of the bearing, and it can be caused by several different things. Firstly, it can be caused by your bike frame, and this is generally more of a problem with press fit bottom brackets like this rather than a threaded one like this. And the reason for that is that when you thread a bottom bracket in, it's usually going into a metal shell and it's much easier to machine high tolerances with metals and alloys compared to carbon. Whereas a press fit bottom bracket will generally be pressed into a carbon shell, it's not as easy to achieve as higher tolerance. If the cavity that the bearing is being pressed into is too small, just ever so slightly, then it can create increased wear, friction, and reduced performance of your bearing. Unfortunately, this is usually a warranty issue for the frame if it's not quite up to standard. So just be aware of that. The next issue that can cause it is the actual chain set itself that goes in. So I've raided Alex's Jura Ace chain set drawer and um, retrieved two here. Now, machined axles out of alloy, like on this Shimano one, from reputable brands, tend to have very high tolerances and are very good. Some more exotic chain sets can have carbon spindles on their chain sets. And this isn't great because the tolerances, like I just described with the bottom bracket shell on carbon, are harder to achieve, and so it might be ever so slightly over or undersized. Now, one of the ways that you can see that things aren't quite as right as they should be uh, is by increased wear on the axle. Now, this can be either from too much pressure on the outside or too much pressure on the inside, but you will see wear and polishing of the axle where it sits within the bearing. Now, this one is a used Jura Ace crank, and, well, the axle looks pretty good to me. There's very little wear on it, whereas this one, it still looks pretty good, but you can see there's markedly more polishing on the non-drive side here, uh, where it's sat within the bearing. And that suggests that the bike this was in had more pressure, probably a little bit too much, on the non-drive side bearing. Now, the other part of the system where the, the tolerances cannot be as they should, is actually the bearings themselves. And I actually found out more about this when I visited Ceramic Speed in Denmark. And it actually blew my mind quite a bit. To give an example of this, I've got three bearings on the table in front of me, three balls that will go into a bearing on the table in front of me. Now, to the naked eye, they all look completely identical, but they're not. And the level of tolerance here is actually mind-blowing and a lot, a lot more precise than what you've probably previously imagined. So we're dealing with microns. Now, to put that into context, a human hair is between 30 and 60 microns thick, and a micron is a thousandth of a millimeter. The difference between this ball and this ball is well, about 20 microns. So it's absolutely tiny, and this one sits in between. Now, if you were to build a, a, a complete bearing using balls, of different sizes, then it, it would just be compromised. It wouldn't work as well and it would wear out quicker. And so the level of precision that's required is absolutely insane. They actually check the size of the individual balls using micrometers like this. Uh, and also then the complete bearing, the tolerances of that can be checked with the micrometers behind me. Number five is a lack of lubrication and maintenance. Now, if you're not jet washing your bike and using WD-40 with the little stick of death, then your bearings will last longer. However, be aware that some servicing will also prolong their life. If you're riding, especially in winter, then I'd recommend servicing every six months either side of winter is a great way to do it. What you'll be looking to do is to periodically remove, wash out, and then replace the grease that's inside your bearings, because that's absolutely crucial for bearing performance. It reduces wear and it reduces friction. Now, there is some really cool tech, which I absolutely love, which does go a long way to solving this, and that is solid lube technology. So instead of the normal uh, sort of you know, lubricants and greases that you would inject inside a bearing, you have this polymer material here. Now, this is used in Ceramic Speed's SLT bearings. SLT stands for solid lube. Now, the downside of this is that it increases 
friction. And so it's not got applications everywhere. You wouldn't want it in places such as the chain set, um, your bottom bracket, you know, or your wheels, because you want them to be as low friction as possible to make your bike more efficient. However, where it does have an excellent application is in headset bearings. Because the, the lubricant in this bearing is this special polymer rather than a grease, it can't be washed out. And that means that this bearing has a really, really high service life. Now, for your headset, that's absolutely amazing, especially as that's a part that's under a lot of stress because it, it also has the axial load of your weight on it, placing a different kind of load on it compared to the bottom bracket bearing. And also you tend to sweat into it a lot. Um, yeah, headset bearings have a tough life. To service your bearings, you're going to want to do this properly. And there are lots of things that you should do and lots of things that you shouldn't do which can destroy your bearings. So if you wanna find out what they are, well, we've got another video that goes into detail on that and how to service your bottom bracket. So make sure you check that out. I hope you found this useful though. I'm gonna go now. Love you, bye. Like and subscribe, all that jazz, bye.